Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 7 of the Fake Mug Character Study. So last month there was two installments, now we're back to one a month. And I've actually decided to change the format a little bit more because, believe it or not, the first seven episodes were introductions. Meaning that those were general points that I wanted to uh, discuss uh, about our boy Hemingway. And now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of stuff and I want the episodes to be more focused on certain topics certain aspects, and there's going to be a thematic uh, environment to each of them. And therefore, they're going to be a little bit shorter, but you'll see that they're going to be more concentrated. I'm not going to be as, um, as uh, diverse when it comes to what I actually talk about in the video. And that's going to be for the next 10, 15, maybe 20 episodes. I don't know. I have a goal in mind. I would want to make 30 of these. I don't know if it's going to be possible. But I think it's, uh, it's, it's doable. I have enough material. So we'll see. We're going to continue one a month. And uh, hopefully, uh, our boy Hemingway is still going to be around. You know, there's a strong chance that at some point during this series, he's just going to call it quits. But I doubt it. Because if there's one thing that he's really good at, it's just sticking around. He's like a roach. That's why people call him roach. Is he cannot die he always manages to find a crack in the, the floor to hide underneath and then he comes out like nothing happened. So I'm going to keep digging, of course, because we want the roach to get out of that hole. But if the roach is gone, understand that this series also might be gone. So it's bittersweet, right? You might want him, you know, punished for what he's done in the past. But at the same time, if he's gone, no more mess. That's a dilemma right there. So in this episode, we're going to mostly discuss the entire stalking saga that happened around Bloho, the reason why the stalking started, what the stalking means also, because there's a lot of uh, hidden meanings in that, and also his weird delusions about how people perceive him and all of the strategies that he applies so that people see him a certain way. For next time, for uh, episode 9, I'm finally going to get to the topic of fake plates. Took me some time, but I wrote something solid that I want to present to you. But that's going to be for next month because it's going to also fit the theme of that video. So it's not for today. And uh, as a, just to touch upon the situation right now with uh, Blahino, what he does on his channel, he's, he brought back the, the videos he makes about current events, pretty much. He just changed the name. And now he does them shirtless in the dark, which of course means that he's getting views again. He's getting a few thousand views because the people who watch him to make fun of him have something funny to finally consume on his channel. And he's realized that, but he's gotten to the point where his life is so pathetic that he doesn't really have a choice. He needs those views so that the channel can stay relevant. And therefore he's willing to make a complete fool out of himself knowing that the people who watch him, watch him to make fun. And really seeing those videos, you get a sense that he's reached rock bottom, but he's been there for so long that now he's made it his house. And just the environment of the videos with no lighting so that you can't see his fat clothes, you can't see that he doesn't have teeth anymore, the, the food that he eats. I mean, I wouldn't even give my dogs that type of food. And the <laughs> a lot of people have pointed that out too. He doesn't chew food. And the reason why he doesn't have teeth to chew anymore or the few that he has left on his rotten maw are just completely destroyed. So they hurt a lot and therefore he cannot chew with them. And so what he does is you see him take like a bite and he quickly chews so that he doesn't feel too much pain and he swallows. I mean, he's used to swallowing at that point, but I wonder the state of his stomach and his intestine, it must be a wreck. And it's something I want to touch upon later, but he's sort of running out of time at this point because his entire thing, and this is the reason why I make those videos also is, he's trying to outlast the haters. He's trying to make sure that he stays irrelevant long enough that he can become relevant again when the people who hate him get tired of it. The issue is that at the very same time, his health is degrading rapidly. He almost has no teeth left. I mean, I have a cat that's 21 years old and she still has teeth. 
She's outboxing Bloho in the dental department. That's sad. His heart could really just go at any moment at this point because he's obese. So I don't see, I don't know if you understand that his point is, his plan is not going to work because even if he somehow made it out of obscurity, YouTube fitness nowadays would never accept him back. I mean, it worked back in the days because there was no co competition. But now, all of the big channels are guys on TRT with hair who look good, who have good camera equipment, who lift 15 times as much as he lifts, who are much bigger. What does he think is going to happen if he somehow makes it back, if people stop hating? And it's the delusion of Blaha. It's, it's the fact that he just cannot wrap his head around the fact that it's over. For him, it, it truly is over. The last amount of relevance he's ever going to have on YouTube Fitness is being a lolcow. That's his full-time job now. He's a full-time lolcow, and that's the only thing he can hope to be. He can never be a strength coach. He can never be a respected YouTube salary. It's not going to happen. The public figure days are gone because you need to go outside of your house to be a public figure. So, that being said, I want to segue into the topic of haters. Because I just described a situation where a man is desperately trying to outdo and to outlast people who make his life a living hell. And he cannot manage to. And that is impressive. That is almost unheard of, actually. Because, you see, I've been around YouTube. I've been around internet for a very long time. I almost grew up on the internet, which is sort of sad. But it's my life. And so I've seen that tell repeat itself again and again. Some guy makes videos, gets a few followers, gets subscribers who like him, but at the same time, they develop haters. They develop people who don't like them. And sometimes these people actually organize. They create organizations, they create groups, and they go after the creator. And that can last for a month, two months, sometimes a year. But it is truly rare when it lasts for longer than that. And I've seen that again, those campaigns of hate. Oh, I've seen dozens of them. Sometimes really ruthless. Sometimes that led to death threats, to uh, swatting, you name it. But it never lasts. It's never something that is sustainable. And the reason why is between love and hate on YouTube fitness, people are going to be drawn towards hate. A, pe a person will watch your channel because they hate you much more than because they love you. Hate is a much more consuming type of energy. But even that type of energy runs out eventually because you get bored or you move on. It is a testimony to how bad of a person Bloho is that he's had stalkers for six, seven years. Some people have followed him for the sole purpose of destroying his life for six years. And when that happens... You cannot blame those people, or at least you cannot blame them entirely, because there needs to be a stimulus coming from the person. There exists no person that is on YouTube that maybe made a mistake or two, got haters, got backlash, and then changed their ways, but still got backlash. If you change your way, people just stop. And that's the explanation as to why Bloho still has stalkers to this day. He doesn't change his ways. And I want to equate that to me. Because I'm not part of any group that follows him around or forums like this. I'm an independent. I see him as a disgusting bug. And I see my goal as exposing him so that he can never come back again and hurt people. That's what I do. And yet, I'm going to touch my own horn here, but I'm very empathic. And I'm not mean by any stretch of the imagination. I'm fairly kind as a person. I am very quick to forgive. And yet, I'm still making these videos. And the question is why? Because sometimes, sometimes, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to take 35 minutes to expose a guy who is garbage, of course, but why am I doing that? I, maybe I'm, I'm being led astray, maybe I'm letting hate, you know, I'm, led, I'm being consumed by hate. And then I watch one of his videos, two minutes, and I'm back on my feet. I'm like, nope, he deserves it 100%. What I'm doing is justifiable. Or I read one of his comments and I'm like, wow, I'm going to make 55 installments of this because he deserves it. And I think it's the same for all of his quote-unquote stalkers. They're the same. They sort of forget about him or they, you know, they do something else. The hate or the, the, 
the disgust they feel sort of dies down, then they get exposed to Bloho for one second and it's back. This is insane. This shouldn't be possible. It's a talent that he has. He is detestable immediately. You just see his face and you want to chuck rocks at it. The second he opens his mouth, I feel the flames of hell just burn up inside me because it, it just, it's a throwback to all of the times he's lied and all of the times he's going to continue lying. And that's the reason why, out of all of the local cars, out of all of the personalities on the internet, Bloho has the most dedicated group of trolls after him. The most. I'm going to tell you some things that these guys did in the past to mess up with him that deserve a, a spot in a museum because it's here. You know, trolling nowadays on YouTube Fitness, it, it died down. The golden days of Genova and Rich Piana are far, far uh, behind us. But the guys that troll Bloho, they, they still do it. They still bring it every single time. And so they need to be uh, saluted for that work. And I want to discuss who they are because I'm not going to name websites or individuals. Don't worry about it. But they are still in the comments. They are under the comments. They comment, uh, we have fun together. They make fun of Bloho because they are the OGs. They started... Uh, bashing him way before I did that. And when you look at the group, when you look at the entity that they, they, they create, yes, some of them are idiots. Of course, there's idiots everywhere. And some of them actually are very similar to Bloho, meaning that I think they hate him because they see some of them in him. And I think it's true across the board for most of us because he is the representation of the seven deadly sins put into one person. He's a greedy pig. I mean, Everything that is detestable in humans is there. It's right there in Bloho. To the point where I sometimes wonder, is he, is he carrying the, the penitence of the human race? Is he punished for the rest of us? Is he a sort of, uh, I, I'm not going to say uh, a prophet, but a receptacle that is just encapsulating all of the things that are bad so that humans can see it and say, okay, I don't want to look like that. I need to make an effort. Maybe. But when uh, I looked at the rest of the group that are not uh, half-wits, like Bloho, I saw something actually very interesting. Because when you look at trolls, when you look at hate groups, quote-unquote, you see that a lot of these people tend to either be destitute or they tend to be young, meaning that they don't really have a direction in life and they don't have much to do, so they can just troll all day. And I found the complete opposite. The people who troll Bloho tend to be middle-class, they tend to be people with kids. They tend to be people with houses. So these are individuals who actually made it in life. So now I'll go back to what I said. Most hate groups tend to give up after a few months. This one has been going strong for six years. And on top of that, that group is made up of productive members of society. So if you're the type of person that manages to rile up a, a group of people who are all working a nine to five, who are all making good money, who have houses and cars, what does it mean about you? Are you part of them? Are you like them? Do, you, do they hate you because you're like them? No, they hate you because they see you as the inferior parasite that you are. And these people tend to not fall into the category that would ever engage in trolling. And yet they do it. I'm sure that a bunch of people had no idea about YouTube fitness or lol cow. And they got sucked into that wood by Bloho because they didn't even get the choice. They saw what he did and they thought, okay, well, I wanted in life to have a family and I wanted to have, make a good living. But now my number one goal in life is to be to mess with this guy for the rest of his life. It's insane. And I can relate because I'm sort of doing the same thing. And what I wrote here too is that, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. And it's that weird ability that he has to, that, to alienate every single person that comes into contact with him. Because I talked about that the last episode. He forces associ association. But a lot of people do that and they just get ignored. He doesn't get ignored. He gets hated for it. And the reason why is because he's like a, a jealous ex-girlfriend. When Bloho gets disappointed or when he gets shut down, he attacks. He spits his venom. And so this is the reason why you've seen him sort of hope from one person to another throughout YouTube fitness, starting as, oh, that's my friend, we're both coof, 
to, oh, that person is the worst individual on earth and our methods don't work. It's because he constantly gets shut down and, and just ostracized and he lashes out. And that to me is just what his life has always been. He was a complete shut in in high school. He was rejected in high school. And that went into his transition to adult life because ne he never got a job. And so he tried to hide on the internet, which I'm going to get to actually, which also didn't work because even people on the internet are intelligent enough to see through lies. And then he tried to infiltrate you to fitness. He was successful, but it turned sour. And now that's his life because he doesn't really have another place to go at this point. Keep in mind that he's 40. He has no job experience at all. His one claim to fame is the ability that he had to grow a channel to a 60k sub and that's it that's all he has and so he's stuck at this point and the only solution for him would be to just leave but of course he's never going to do that so that's the entire story uh, with the trolls and the introduction of the trolls because they're going to make more operations in later episodes because sometimes i'm going to actually refer to some of them who did certain things to blow And I think I talked about that before, but I just want to reiterate that every single time you see one of these videos gets bombed with dislikes, those are not bots. And uh, the proof I have of that is that uh, Bloho, the, the hypocrite that he is, actually strikes all of my videos, dislikes all of my videos, and comments on all of my videos using bots. Because a bot, I mean, it's, I know that for people who don't work in that type of domain, they think it's some magical stuff. A bot, for the most part, is just someone who's going to create a sock account that they are going to use to dislike. That's it. That's what Bloho does. He doesn't have the ability to actually program a bot. And so when that fat turd speaks in his comments about someone running a, a dislike bot, that doesn't work like that. It's, you can write programs that are going to generate dislikes, but you think YouTube would be fooled by those? They control the like and dislike. They know exactly when a like and dislike ratio is fraudulent and they delete them and the proof is that this idiot continues to rate my video to dislike them for the dislikes to be removed like 40 minutes later can you imagine he has and that's also a proof that he has nothing to do during his day he doesn't work he sits there for 40 minutes going from one sock account to another to click dislike knowing full well that are going to be deleted afterwards why? Well, the reason why is because, one, it's projection, because he feels terrible about the fact that his videos get disliked, which also is a sign that whoever is doing it should continue. And also, it's a sign that he's a hi complete hypocrite. They, we're talking about a guy who on his channel complains about, oh, freedom of speech is under attack and they're targeting Republicans like me and blah, blah, blah. And at the same time, he deletes 90% of the comments on his page. You cannot compute the two together. And the worst part is that he doesn't even try to hide it at this point. And so you're in a situation where he keeps claiming it's dislike bots, but dislike bots are not, uh, are not runnable on YouTube. And so it's just an army of the ghosts of the people he banned who still to this day go on his page to dislike. I want to tie that back to the troll group. Do you realize the amount of dedication that needs to be inspired into someone for them to come back every day just to dislike your video. That's insane. <clears throat> He's a, like a motivator, but the opposite of one. The only way he can motivate people is to push them to, to hate him. And he doesn't even have to try because it's his personality at this point. He sometimes tries to claim that he's just a troll, that he does that for entertainment, but I, it's not possible. He doesn't have even the ability to troll because trolling requires some self-awareness. He just is the quintessential law cow. He is perfect in what he does and he doesn't even have to try. It's, it comes natural. For our boy way, it's a second nature. But of course, uh, the idea of the dislike bot ties into a big concept and a trend with Bloho, which is he's an expert on everything. And I think this is a really good sign and a good way to tell if someone is full of crap. 
when do you tell them something or you talk to them about a topic and they know. Like the first thing that comes up down their mouth is, oh, I already know. And then they're going to tell you a bunch of BS about it. That's him. He cannot not be a, an expert on something. If you're talking about a topic, even if it's completely out there, he'll know. And of course, most of his knowledge comes from Google because he never comes out of his house, so he can always Google something. But it also ties into the Dunning-Kruger effect. So for the non-initiated, the Dunning-Kruger effect is the idea that the less you know about a topic, the more of an expert you think you are, and then the more your knowledge raises, the less you think you know about it. To the point where you reach a point where you say, I know that I don't know. That's sort of the end goal. And I would agree with that mindset if and only if I didn't think that he secretly hates himself. Meaning that the Dunning-Kruger effect can happen in anyone in reality. It's mostly tied to people who have grandiose narcissism because they always think that they're the best, that they're the greatest. Bloho has vulnerable narcissism. He knows he's garbage. But what he also knows is that he cannot let people think he's garbage. There's a big difference. And so this entire LARP about him being 147 IQ, being a genius, etc. It's not true. Deep down, he knows that he is he's a human turd golem. He just tries to project an image because he thinks that if people like him for it, he'll be able to like himself. But that's never going to happen. It's not the way around it. Plus... It's especially dangerous and especially difficult if you're a terrible liar. I remember a comment from the last video that summed it up perfectly. Bloho thinks that people are stupider than him. But if you look at the bell curve, he's right there. He's on the left. He's already an outlier in terms of imbecility. There's very few people that are more stupid than him. Genova is more intelligent than him, in my opinion. In terms of social skills and in terms of, of ability to adapt to the environment, he mobs Bloho. So the few people that are stupider than him are people who got in car accidents and are just brain damn legumes. That's it. And that's a very small portion of YouTube fitness. It's still a portion. There's a lot of people who are really stupid on this platform, but it's still small. And it's the reason why 90% of the people who find him think he's stupid. And I want to discuss this because I think this might be a man that no one has heard about. So I want to say it. He actually got a shout out maybe three months ago from a really big channel. And that channel I'm going to name because who cares? It's uh, Will Tennyson. That guy gave a shout out to Bloho in one of his videos and linked Bloho's channel and his program in the description. That usually results in a boom in subscribers. When a channel that has 100k subs plus who is blowing up really popular recommends you, a lot of people are going to subscribe. They won't even check your page. They'll just do it because their idol told them to do it. And that happened. Guess what happened to Bloho's page? Social Blade reflected a minimal gain in subscriber and the gain wasn't even sustained, meaning that the few people who subscribed to him unsubscribed quickly. Why do you think that is? All of those people went from a channel with a professional guy who knows how to film and who looks good to blow host page. It's like entering a nice hotel. You get to your room. The door is shiny and gorgeous. It smells beautiful in the alleyway. You open the door. The room is completely dark. There's cockroaches on the floor. It smells like piss. And then on, in the corner of the room, you see like a dark figure hunched over, sitting on a, on a box squat, eating rice and just looking at you. You would flee. You would slap that door and just run for your life. And I think that's what happened. All of those poor kids that went from a Zoomer channel to Bloho's, uh, <laughs> to Bloho's lair of depravity clicked one video, saw an obese guy doing half squats, and they just said, what is going on? Why was that guy recommended to me? Is that a joke? I don't know if that was a joke. I don't know if Will was actually trolling when he did that. I know that he's since removed the channel link from and the program link from his description, but he still has the, the shout out in the video. And yet, nothing happened. And it's the reason why also his, the entire plan of Bloho to wait it out, to wait for the haters to, to stop, which is never going to happen, by the way. They're going to continue until you're dead, Bloho. 
that's never going to work. Because even if magically tomorrow, the entire portion of the internet that hates him disappeared, it wouldn't save him. It wouldn't change his situation. He's still an obese, hunched over little troll that is never going to have the ability to attract any relevant audience at this point. It's over. And he knows it. It's the reason why I just spoke about the vulnerable narcissism part. He knows it. Deep down, he knows that all of his efforts are going to lead to nothing. But the issue is that it's, it's the only thing he knows how to do. It's that. It's being that entity on the internet. And therefore, he's never going to stop. And it's the reason why at the start of the video, I said, would you really want him to stop? I'm not worried about it. Unless he actually dies physically, he's going to continue. Even if tomorrow he gets evicted from his house and he cannot lift, he'll continue making videos because it's not about lifting. He, it was never about lifting. He's not a powerlifter. He's a failed, failed bodybuilder and he hates hard work. He loves one thing and one thing only, attention. The attention he didn't get from his dad when he was growing up and now that he gets from trolls. But even that is better than nothing because he has no friends, he has no families. And so you can expect him to continue making videos. He's gotten to the point, and it's something I'll touch on later uh, in the next episode actually, but he's gotten to the point where his videos gets, get 500 views in a week. Someone who has 100k subs gets 500 views in a week. You think he's going to stop? The channel where he makes zero money, I can guarantee you that. He would continue making videos even if they got 80 views. Because it's, it's, this is it. This is it. Like I heard an old Italian guy said at the store, this is it. It's over for him. That's his life now. He's confined to that. And no amount of extra help, no amount of shout out can help him. Even if tomorrow, Athlean X, the biggest channel on YouTube Fitness, recommended his channel, it would still not save him. That's how deep he is in that hole. So that was for the Dunning Kruger thing. And I'm actually going to check the time now and we're going to move on to the next one. Excellent. Okay. 27 minutes. And I think that's perfect. It's going to be the exact length that I want those videos to be at around 35, 40 minutes. So we spoke about the, uh, the, the trolls that follow him, the hate he gets on the internet, the fact that uh, nothing is ever going to make it better because as I said, the haters are never going to stop and even if they stop, nothing is going to change for him. And now I want to uh, sort of touch on the topic of mi the middle class because as I just said, he's completely destitute, he's on welfare and yet if you believe, if you listen to him and if you believe him, that's not the case at all. If you believe him, he makes around 70, 80 K a year. He's a very successful strength coach. He has multiple sex par sexual partners who are all 20 year old uh, pom pom girls from, uh, from like uh, te Texas A&M. I think that's the name of the, the, the big college. He, he's, a, he's massively muscular. He's a wood, uh, wood record, record older powerlifter. He has a family that loves him. He has a ton of friends. People think he's the funniest person on earth. They call him the monster because he mugs everyone in public. That's his life according to him. Like if he, could, if, he, if he knew how to draw, because I'm sure that he cannot draw because he cannot do anything properly. If he could draw you his life, that's what he would draw it like. And that's his weird delusion. But we know that's not true. We know that even he knows that's not true. That's just what he wants to present to the world. And that's part of his plan also because people are attracted to fame and money. And when you go to someone's, someone's channel, if they can blindside you by saying, oh, I'm that big baller guy and I do this and I do that, there's a chance you're going to stick around. Issue is he fails to understand that for this lie to function, there needs to be some exterior signs of wealth. You can't just say I'm wealthy. You need to look a little bit wealthy too. And he doesn't have any of that. I mean, if I describe to you a man who records with a terrible camera, terrible audio in a dark living room, well, you might say you're describing yourself. Okay, thank you, offense taken. But if I tell you that he records shirtless, you see hair on his straps and shoulders, disgusting hair, he's bored. But he pretends not to be bored. 
you can see that he has no teeth. He, he dims the light to make sure you cannot see his teeth. And by the way, a fun challenge, challenge would be to go on this channel and say, hey, show your teeth. Do this. Show the teeth. Well, you know what? I'll do it. Bloho. For every teeth you show, I'll send you $100. For every teeth you show. Why don't you do it? Show your teeth. You show your weight. You weighted yourself. So why don't you show all of those pearly whites that you have in your mouth? Just for the laws. Because you have, like I have, you have your 32 teeth, right? Perfect dentition. You go to the dentist all the time because you make money. Again, he claims that he has clients who are dentists who give him appointments for free. Okay, well, then you should have perfect teeth. Show you teeth. Show you teeth. I can't send you the money. I don't care. Why don't you do it? Because last time I made an episode and you came into my comment and you said you were going to expose me for my lies. So you know I exist. You said it in your comments that you know you see my videos. So you see this. Why don't you do it? And for the people who watch him, ask him, show your teeth. That would be fun. That would be a good time. He, he, he measured himself to show he's not a manlet. He can show his teeth to show that he's not a teethlet. But I digress. So the entire, the, the, the entire picture that Bloch is going to paint is completely destroyed by, by the reality of the situation, what we can see, which is a complete recluse who has no money. And yet, he just won't let it go. And that's the funniest part. And I personally think those are the funniest men that come from Bloho. When he's trying to pretend he's middle class, which is, by the way, first off, 80k a year for a single man in a place of, in Texas that is not super expensive, is not middle class. It would be middle upper class. Um, but, of course, he knows nothing about money because he's never made any. So I can't really blame him for the, uh, the imprecision. So yeah, 80K, uh, uh, according to him, is middle class. And the, the, the weird details he gives too about what middle class would be. So I remember back in the days, he would say that he would take several baths a day, even in between sets. I don't know why he would say that. It's so stupid. But maybe he thinks that people who are middle class take baths and that people who are poor take showers. I, I mean, we're talking about someone whose entire understanding of life comes from pop culture and television. He understands the life through sitcoms. So maybe he watched a sitcom where poor people took showers and rich people had luxury baths and they took long baths. And that's why he's, he's spinning that weird lie. He takes vacations all the time. If you believe him, every time he deloads, he takes a vacation, which ties also to the fact that when he deloads, his deloads are never scheduled, which is terrible. Any powerlifting coach will tell you that you're supposed to schedule your deload. You can't just deload when you feel like it. That's not how you program. And also, it's always convenient. When he starts progressing in strength and he gets injured, he deloads. Of course, he never says he gets injured, but I can tell you that's what happens. He gets snapped up. He takes five days off. What do you think he does during those five days? I think he plays World of Warcraft alone in his apartment for 20 hours a day. I think that's what happens. But of course, uh, not according to him. According to him, he goes to Hawaii. He goes to a secret destination that I cannot share because my stalkers would go there. He sends pictures of him at airports or places he calls airports because he usually takes them in the bathroom so you can't really know where he is, saying, oh, I did this. And the funny part too with him is that, and that's something across the board, and it's a life advice I'm going to give you, that is very, very common with liars. They can't just lie. People who are intelligent and can manipulate others understand perfectly that... Oh, wait. Did I, did I take the pause back? I was just rambling. I didn't even hit pause, did I? Sorry about that. So people who... I'm just obsessed with Bloho at this point. He's just in my mind. I, I, it's, it's, it's a life goal to expose him. I started this video. I was low energy. I'm supposed to deadlift after this. I'm here now. No pre-workout needed. I just need to make a character study on Bloho. I'm re ready to crush the weight. So what I was saying was people who lie cannot just lie. And if you're intelligent, you know that the best lies are the most succinct because the more you lie, the more you add to the lie, the more you create space for deduction to come and take away a portion of the lie, which tends to rip the entire lie apart. So the lies need to be short and they need to be Connected to reality, but not enough that you 
that you're going to spin an entire story around it. But he doesn't know that because he has 45 IQ. And so his entire thing is, if he lies, he's going to tell more lies to cover the lie, which always catches up to him. Because if one lie gets revealed, you just go back to the beginning and now you know that the first thing was a lie too. So the big thing with him is he goes to airports, but it's not enough. He needs to be able to show you how much of an alpha male he is. So what he would say is, oh, I actually had a good laugh with the hostess or oh, we flirted a little bit or some guy approached me and told me, wow, you lived, bro, as if anyone would say that to him. I mean, if I saw him on the street and I didn't know who he was, my first instinct would be like, wow, that guy looks terrible. Second instinct would be, maybe I'm going to go away and maybe back off a little bit, you know, because he, he has a presence. I don't want to intimidate him too much because he might shoot me dead, who knows? But it would never be to ask him if he lives. When you're out in the public, what do people see? They see your arms. They don't see the, the powerlifting chest. They don't see the white back or the cottage, cottage cheese legs. They see the arms. He has spaghetti arms. I mean, people would, might approach him to ask if he has advanced leukemia, maybe. But I don't think people would ask him if he lives. And he spun the same type of lie <laughs> when uh, he got sued by, uh, by the good doctor, uh, Mr. Mr. Lane Norton. And he said that he had a good laugh with the, the lawyer of Lane, as if a lawyer would ever have a good laugh with the person he's trying to, uh, to get money from. He also said that, and that's the story of the fish hook, the people who are versed in the men's know what I'm talking about. But the story of the fish hook ended with him going to karaoke with a bunch of bouncers because of course he has an alpha presence so every single alpha male wants to hang out with him and they had a good time together it always ends like this it ends with him having social interactions with people why because he doesn't have it in real life he is extremely awkward you can see it in the videos where he's with just random civilians he cannot relate to people and therefore in his tiny coconut head he creates a world where he's that charismatic you know alpha male that just draws attention and is so magnetic because he doesn't have it. The only thing he seems to be able to attract is flies with his head and trouble. So that was for the middle class, the, the bath thing. Um, and there's also, and if you have other things that he likes to spin for the middle class, let me know. I know that there are other things that I forgot, but one thing that I always find interesting with him is he is working so hard at making it look like he works hard so that he would actually spend hours and hours telling lies about how dedicated he is, etc. When in reality, if you're dedicated, just work. People will see. But of course, he hates hard work. And so it's much easier to lie. And what he does to prove that he works hard is he wakes up at 4 a.m., so in his head, it's a good thing. I know people like this, so I'm not surprised. I know people who think that because they wake up early, they're better than others. But that's entirely stupid. What matters is not how early you woke up. It's how much you slept and how much you're going to work. If you wake up at 5 a.m. and you work until noon, great. That's not a day of work. Just because you woke up earlier doesn't make you better. But he only has that. And again, he... His entire life scope is through sitcoms and through the TV. And so he sort of, he, he, cl he clings to that, of the idea that if I wake up early, I'm a productive member of society, or at least I'm going to make my subscribers think that I'm a productive member of society. And this is the reason why also he claims that um, it's dark when he records because the sun is not up, even though you can see through the blinds that there's the sun outside. He's, he cannot even match his own lies. It's not even that he struggles to tie lies together. It's that even one lie he cannot do properly. It's uh, not sad because he's a terrible person. It's never sad with Blahino, but it truly is a case study. It's a character study. He is an asset to humanity. So that's the lie of waking up at 4 a.m. He also says he works out in the morning, which who cares? He hasn't woken a single day in 20 years. He can work out at any time. It doesn't change anything. And what does he say to... Oh, yeah. He records videos in advance, which is 
not the worst, I do it too, but I do it a week in advance, not uh, two months. Two months, he would say, oh, this video is two months old. Why would you do that? You, it's, it's going to kill the continuity of the channel, which he doesn't really care about, of course, because he, he's been making, in well, he's been making the same 20 videos for the past five years. And if you don't believe me, just go on his channel. He has, I think, 13 or 14 videos on calisthenics and why they're better because you move your body through space. I am not kidding. Type calisthenic Blahino and look at how many videos. He tells the same things in every single video. And so it's the reason why his channel is that monstrosity with 6,000 vids, no playlist, so you can't even go through, which is again a testimony to how, how terrible of a businessman he truly is. Because if his goal, that's what he, he used to say, his goal was to create a catalog of videos, retire and make money off of them, which wouldn't work because YouTube doesn't recommend all videos. And two, how are people supposed to find your videos if you don't have playlists, you dance? He doesn't think anything through. It's impressive that he actually managed to survive so long, which is in part due to the fact that he lives in a society that keeps him alive through welfare. So he can really thank the government and the taxpayer for that. But still, I would expect that guy to put a fork in an outlet at some point or the other in his life. He managed to make it to almost 50. That's impressive. So that's the, the 60 videos in advance, which no one watches. And he has two fridges. And I'm going to end on the fridges thing, because I have done enough, I think, for the day. The fridges thing started because um, Mr. My Private Life is Private shares his private life all the time. And the reason why is he has none, and therefore he needs to fabricate one. But if you really want people to believe you have one, you need to create some elements. You need to show yourself going outside, etc. And this is what got us uh, the... The, the paragon of YouTube fitness content that is Bloho who goes at Costco to snatch and grab some jasmine rice. Bloho who grabs a, 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 a pack of ribs and shows it next to himself to show how big he is. As if, you know, the scale, it would, we would be able to scale him next to the rib. And people would think, oh yeah, I go to Costco all the time and I see those ribs. He is jacked. Like he's compared to those ribs, he's huge completely different standards to what normal people would do in real life. No one thinks like this. And yet he did it with the, the complicity of Moon Cookie who recorded that and thought, that's great, babe. How do the, I mean, I'll touch on Moon Cookie there. I mean, I won't touch on her. I don't want to get AIDS, but I'll, I'll cover it, right? I think it's a better term. I'll cover it. And he continuously does that across the board, shows his cars. People say that's a shit car. He says, oh, it's not even my car, bro. Uh, what, what else has he done in the past? I mean, he's so proud of his equipment. I'll touch on the equipment also. But one thing that, that just killed me, and it's, it's a delicious mint, is he had a fridge. He took a picture of his food, and you could see the fridge. And it was a very small fridge. And I think he even took a picture of the inside because he wanted to show people that he had a lot of food and he makes a lot of money. First off, people pointed out immediately that one, the food in the fridge was garbage. He had like eggs in there that were the lowest quality you can get, like the type you get at Walgreens. He had cheap food and uh, he had wine in there. And people immediately pointed in and said, Bloho, you're not supposed to put wine in the fridge, you dumbass. And so his entire LARP and the way he manages to manage to save himself was to say, oh, no, no, that's not my actual fridge. That's my overflow fridge. Can't make that up. I mean, the second he's challenged on something, he's going to backpedal. But as he backpedals, he just he brings the entire the, the entire plot with him. Everything collapses around him. An overflow fridge. A bachelor in his 40s doesn't need an overflow fridge, especially when he's already obese, because keep in mind that all of the food he would put in that fridge is food he's using to maintain his fat. It's all of the bulk he has around here, that floaty he has there, comes from the, the thousands of calories he consumes he doesn't need, that he, at this point, manages to fit in that tiny college fridge he has. 
Imagine if he actually had a big family-sized fridge. He would be obese on top of obese. He would be 600 pounds, which we could make it happen. Just saying, it's a possibility. I mean, you can manipulate the guy into saying and doing anything you want if you know how to na navigate around his pea brain. Therefore, I think that if you talked him into becoming a super heavyweight powerlifter, he would do it. We could get him to in Edeburg, Ed oh, that it's impossible to pronounce, Heidenberg level, just like Genova. And so that's the tale of the fridge. And um, I don't want to talk about the way he eats and the food he eats yet, because it's something that is going to be more relevant in later installments. And so I'm going to leave you at that. And we are actually almost done with sheet number two. And we are at episode eight. Next episode nine, we will finish cheap, uh, cheat number two. And after that, how, do you th how many do you think I have left? How many of these do you think I have? Well, the answer is three. Plus another one that I'm working on. So you can expect a minimum of 15 episodes after this. But of course, as I said, I want to get to 30. We'll see if it's possible, but I want to make it a reality. Because one, I'm having a good time making these. It's always fun. Two, Bloho deserves it to hell and back. I saw a comment saying that he's just getting back the negative energy he put into the universe. That's true. He's getting it back with the interests. And three, I have a lot of thumbnails and I spend a lot of time writing titles that I found are really funny. And so I want to use them all and they total to 30. So I think it's a nice round number and uh, I think we can get to that. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.